This is Buddy Hackett, for those of you who are in the audience under the age of 50, probably never never seen nor heard of him. But he was a stand-up comedian known for actually pretty foul language, I think. And this this actually, this video I, I excerpted from a video that was labeled as something Buddy Hackett tries to keep it clean on, on Johnny Carson's show. So tries not to say anything dirty. And this is clean, so don't worry about it. Guy walks into the bar with his neck like this. He says to the guy, give me a scotch. He says, it's a nice joint you got here. It's a neighborhood place. I says, yeah, we got a lot of regular people coming in here. I says, yeah, give me another scotch. The guy walks up and says, you new around here? He says, yeah, I am. He says, got a little trouble with your neck. He says, oh, I I've been to every clinic. Been down there to that one in Baltimore. Been to that one up there in Minnesota. Been to that one down in North Carolina. He said, hey, nobody can fix nothing. Give me a scotch. The guy says, look, I'm a chiropractor. He says, get away from me. Give me a scotch. He says, let me, it won't hurt you. He says, well, what the hell? He went, oh, my, 20 years. Oh, God, give me a drink. <laughs> All right. So our next talk will be uh, not about scotch. It'll be about a non topical non-steroidal. Topical diclofenac causes systemic NSAID toxicity by Dr. Lucas Pfeiffer. Okay. All right, can you hear me okay? All right, hey, I'm Lucas Pfeiffer. I'm one of the... Uh, intern categorical medicine residents here. Uh, thanks, Nilima. That was a great talk. Um, let's uh, get started then. So topical diclofenac causes systemic NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory toxicity. This was suggested by Dr. Gersoff, I believe. Disclosures from me. So um, just a couple of quick uh, points about diclofenac. It's actually been around a long time. First patented in 1965 as Caterolac came in as the brand name Voltaren in 1988. Then the diclofenac topical gel released in 2007, which just recently became generic uh, in February of this year. Um, oh, no, sorry. Now generic, but also uh, available over the counter. Um, diclofenac uh, metabolized in the liver um, with no active metabolites. Uh, lasts in your body for around two hours, excreted mostly by the kidneys, some in the biliary system. Uh, the mechanism of action is non-selective inhibition of COX-1 and 2, which prevents the formation of inflammatory prostaglandins, things like PGE-2, thromboxin B2 levels. Um, these are used in some of these studies as a surrogate for efficacy of uh, Caterolac to kind of check those serum levels and make sure they're, they're lower than normal. Um, and then uh, Caterolac is particularly notable because it's one of the more potent anti-inflammatories, and that's because there's some other... Um, conjectured uh, mechanisms of action, or action in these uh, different pathways. So it's uh, particularly potent anti-inflammatory. The main concerns about inside toxicity are with gastric and renal injury. So the prostaglandins that are produced by COX-1 and 2 and some of these other me mechanisms serve to protect the gastric mucosa as well as the kidneys. Um, in the, kit, in the stomach, the prostaglandins increase gastric blood flow. That allows for more mucus and bicarb secretion, which, which prevents damage from the uh, naturally secreted stomach acid. And then in the kidneys, it also has a vasodilatory effect, which counteracts the RAS system, allowing for um, adequate perfusion of the kidneys. So um, when you inhibit these COX um, enzymes, then uh, you're losing some of that vasodilatory effect. You can have some ischemic damage. Um, to uh, both the stomach and the kidneys. So, um, and then to go one step further, AIN or acute interstitial nephritis is also um, accounts for about 15% of AKI due to NSAIDs on top of their uh, blood flow effects. Uh, in terms of diclofenac efficacy in treating arthritis, I didn't really dive into this too much because it wasn't really the topic of this discussion, but um, it's uh, pretty widely used now, like I said, available over the counter. Um, there's been a lot of studies done with pretty robust data to show that it's um, pretty much as efficacious as PO uh, NSAIDs. And I've got a couple figures to show you on that subject. Um, 
And then, uh, like I said, they've uh, also done studies with um, PGE2 and thromboxane A2 levels as surrogates, which are used as surrogates for inflammation, uh, drawn locally in the tissues where um, uh, the diclofenac gel is applied, and they uh, show noticeable downtrend in those levels also. Um, <clears throat> so real quick, this is just a big meta-analysis. You can kind of see that um, <clears throat> The diclofenac patch is uh, actually actually produced better pain relief in these uh, 250 or so patients than uh, PO ibuprofen, um, and that's kind of one of my take-home points at the end is that if you're going to use a, a topical anti-inflammatory diclofenac patch, actually has the best data for the best pain relief. And uh, that's another figure kind of backing that up, <clears throat> and you can see diclofenac gel and solution are kind of on that uh, spectrum of uh, certainly being better than placebo. Um, let's take a quick look at the diclofenac gel package insert. I just kind of bolded a couple of the kind of scary claims that are made here. And, you know, the gist is that uh, p uh, older patients should be careful using this medication, especially if you have history of any of these comorbidities like uh, poor liver function, hypertension, heart failure, and uh, poor renal function. Uh, there's also black box warning. Uh, it comes along with topical diclofenac, uh, saying it's contraindicated in people who've had cabbage procedures and uh, should uh, be used with caution in people who have had serious GI bleeding. So I've got five studies to kind of review here. Uh, I kind of tried to make it a little truncated so I don't uh, see too many glazed over faces and eyes out there in the crowd. So um, first we kind of look at efficacy and safety. Um, this is uh, another large meta-analysis from 2016. Just kind of a couple of take-home points here from McPherson saying that topical, topical diclofenac reached very low serum concentrations compared to PO, uh, on the order of about 2% compared to um, people taking NSAIDs by mouth, which, you know, would lead you to believe that, you know, there's probably less systemic effect from topical diclofenac compared to a PO formulation. And then for more in 2010, um, just uh, kind of speaking to the efficacy of topical diclofenac, the number needed to treat for arthritis being quite low, uh, number of six for the solution, and then 11 for the gel. And then uh, Dr. Baroff in 2011 and Conifin in 2013, and Roth are also 2013. Um, they had uh, several thousand subjects treated with topical NSAIDs versus just the carrier gel as their placebo. And uh, they only had one serious adverse effect uh, of DVT and PE, and they determined that not to be uh, related to the study drug. So all those patients coming out with uh, very, very few, if any, um, adverse effects. Uh, a couple of visual aids from those studies. Um, this one on the top is uh, looking at the bioavailability of topical diclofenac, or actually, sorry, um, edofenamate, which is another topical NSAID. Um, but I thought the graph was... Uh, just spoke to how local this medication stays when it's applied topically. Uh, you get really low concentrations in the blood and then really great absorption in the uh, synovial membrane, cruciate ligament, other structures in the area that it's applied. And then um, looking at plasma concentrations down below, um, it's just um, really quite low um, compared to the concentrations you get in the local tissue. And then... Uh, this was kind of an interesting study. Uh, 24 healthy individuals were given uh, a dose of PO diclofenac, and then they actually did functional MRIs before and after of their kidneys to kind of look at how the kidney um, blood flow was affected. Um, and uh, so basically what they found was that uh, the serum concentration, again, quite low, um, quite low for people who have topical diclofenac, and they actually found... Uh, that it never really reached the 225 nanomole concentration that you really needed to have effects on kidney blood flow. Um, so much so that they actually didn't include any of the functional MRI imaging from the topical diclofenac group because it just um, looks so similar to baseline. So what you have here is, um, is uh, their uh, fMRI study showing renal perfusion in uh, in uh, the PO Cateralac patients who achieved their serum concentration greater than 225 or less than 225. Um, 
and uh, people who were taking the topical diclofenac, they didn't get uh, achieve a higher serum concentration than 75. Um, now talk a little bit about uh, more kind of more safety data from some some large meta analyses. Um, this one included 36 randomized control trials, seven observational trials, and seven observational studies showed no significant increase in reported adverse effects. And three control studies found no significant increase in systemic adverse effects, including GI bleeding, uh, acute renal failure, and symptomatic uh, peptic ulcer disease. Um, most withdrawal, um, most patients withdrew from the study if they did because of topical skin irritation, and that was kind of the the take-home message from a lot of these studies. If people are going to discontinue this, it's going to be because their skin's getting irritated. Um, and then their conclusion was on the basis of our findings, topical NSAIDs can be readily prescribed for the treatment of osteoarthritis, irrespective of common comorbidities or other medications. And as you can see in that figure off to your right, um, the diclofenac gel actually had less uh, GI adverse complaints compared to the placebo. So there's another thing I kind of learned from these studies is that even when you give people placebo, they're going to complain a lot about GI effects. Um, so uh, next up, um, this is a placebo-controlled trial. Actually, it was kind of interesting. Looked at 32 transplant patients and, and pretty long-term topical diclofenac use to eradicate actinic keratoses. Um, well, I didn't have a lot of great visual aids from this one. Um, it was interesting in that um, there really were no significant adverse effects on any of these patients. And my kind of opinion here is that it's a small study. You know, there wasn't, um, um, you know, this is not a very large N, but uh, it was. It really showed like pretty safe prolonged use in these really sensitive patients who, you know, probably have quite poor kidney function at baseline, or are at least very tenuous. Um, but it was it was it was found to be safe and all that. It'd be great to see a larger study in in patient, patients with um, transplants. Um, there's another uh, kind of safety analysis study. Uh, we had 930 patients here, and. Uh, double dummy controlled trial, which is where they either gave them a PO placebo with the topical diclofenac or PO diclofenac with a topical placebo. Um, they let these guys go for 12 weeks and had uh, um, some good lab follow-up, which was nice. I didn't see that in a lot of other studies. And they really tracked the um, adverse effects closely. So looking at, uh, we're kind of a little obscured up here. But uh, looking at the complaints between uh, the topical and the oral diclofenac groups, the p-values are very significant in terms of any GI disorders, dyspepsia, diarrhea, abdominal distension, or abdominal pain, um, showing that there was definitely less of that in the topical diclofenac group compared to PO. And then uh, looking at this data down here on the left is, uh, is uh, tracking the lab values uh, from before and after the study. Uh, the dark, the darker black is the oral group, and the lighter gray is the topical group. And uh, the changes in creatinine, creatinine clearance, and hemoglobin were not statistically significant. But as you can see, really very few changes from baseline. And if there were any, it was very minimal in the topical group. Sick. All right, and then this is uh, kind of expanding on some of that lab, those lab values from the liver function. Um, the only thing that was, uh, or one of the things that really stuck out here was the, the change in from baseline to end of study in terms of the ALT, and that was uh, very clinically significant. In the oral diclofenac group, nothing really uh, significant in the, in the um, topical group. This is a graph from the same study about cardiovascular outcomes. Really um, didn't really show any adverse effects um, in, in either the oral or topical group. There was one serious adverse effect from the study uh, of arterial, arteriolosclerosis, but was not deemed to be related to the topical treatment. So a couple take-home points. Um, you know, we have pretty good data that uh, shows that topical diclofenac is efficacious in treating osteoarthritis. Um, 
Also, more data showing that we achieve very low serum concentrations of diclofenac when we use topical formulations. Um, I think there's reasonable data to suggest that topical formulations are relatively safe for patients with and without comorbidities, though uh, some clinical judgment still applies, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. And uh, lastly, diclofenac patches are the most uh, efficacious when it comes to which formulation specifically you're going to go with for your patients. Um, some things that could use some further study in this area, um, a lot of these studies were conducted with uh, just applying to the knee. It'd be nice to see some other studies where uh, we kind of liberalize the application site and kind of see how that affects people. Um, could also use more long-term use and follow-up data. Uh, a lot of these studies kind of cut off at 12 weeks, uh, about three months, and we don't really go beyond that. So it'd be nice to see people are using it for up to a year, two years, and see if that uh, long-term exposure has any effect on end organs. Um, also, uh, a lot of patients were excluded for some of these trials, people who have previous severe GI bleeding or uh, really advanced kidney disease. Um, so it would be nice to see some more studies in, uh, in people with those uh, more extensive comorbidities. Um, also patients uh, who are on anticoagulants, I didn't really see any, any data to uh, support safe use in those folks. Um, and then it would be nice to see some other studies with other topical NSAIDs and uh, be nice to know also how often is this being used in the clinic, All right? Reftis and then some other studies if you want to check them out. Okay, okay. anybody uh, have any comments or questions? Dr. Gersoff, not here, huh? He left. This was his topic. Where'd he go? Dr. Bookspan, any comments, questions? Local. What I've noticed clinically is that there's not much toxicity, and they seem to be effective when it's just one site that's causing trouble. What hasn't been very effective are people who have diffuse um, osteoarthritis, hands, knees, hip, etc. cetera, um, and then I don't think it's really been very helpful. So I think it's certainly not dangerous. Um, and for a single site of pain, it probably is worth trying. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? All right, you guys are sleeping today, man. All right. So, is it a myth? Topical diclofenac causes systemic non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug toxicity. How many people think this is true? How many think it's plausible based on this data that's been presented? How many think it's busted? Now oh, it's unanimous again. Okay, I'll let you do it. <laughs> 